but today we're just going to go ahead and starting a new DUNS number. Um, request your existing DUNS number, view or modify your information. So if you put some information in there, that's where you would go to view and modify that information. Request your existing DUNS number, view and verify your information for your existing DUNS number. And these all go to these over here. So if this is you, this is where you would do those different things. Okay. Let's go ahead and request a new DUNS number. And we have the uh, trade style uh, name, the legal name, the legal structure. You get the legal structure of your corporation or your government facility, limited liability company, LLC, a nonprofit, or your partnership or a proprietorship. And you can list that legal structure in here. If you don't, <clears throat> trade style name, here's different for the different trades. Um, name and number of the business over here. The street location, physical address of your business, the city or physical, physical business, the state, the zip, and the country. And all these things right here are pretty much filled out from where you fill, first filled it in. Uh, mailing address is optional. Um, we can put same as physical address if you don't have a mailing address. The organizational name, the executive name, who is who is the charging the charging body of this uh, facility? Who's who's the person that is the owner or the the executive who's in charge of this? This uh, this organization. Um, we'll just go ahead and I'll put right there. I want to go take my name back out of there and just put Mr. Owner. The title: CEO, Chairman, uh, Chairperson, Counselor. Um, there's a lot of different things here. Just read these very carefully. Mayor, Owner. You know, it goes all the way through the Superintendent, Treasurer. You can go through that to set that right there up. We're just going to go ahead and do this as a uh, owner, okay? Primary SIC code, and this is going to give you a little information. What is an SIC code? Well, this is very easy because on the left-hand side here, you'll notice that there's a lot of little question marks and stuff like that, and it'll pop up in your full legal name of the business, okay? So every one of these little things, if you have any more problems with that, it will explain these things very, very well. Enter the full zip code, write none if the postal codes are not used. It's very, very helpful. Um, let's go ahead and get a primary SIC because a lot of you guys don't know what an SIC number is. They're just getting started. So we're going to click on that. Enter the four-digit primary SIC code that best describes the company. For an SIC code reference information, please refer to, and it has this website there, to that number classification. I want to exit that out now. I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to go ahead and paste that number in there. Description of operations. What is that? Okay, let's look at that. A description of a business activity. What kind of things do your does your business do? Uh, socioeconomic data. Look at this right here. If I drop down, are we a minority-owned? Are we a veteran-owned business? Um, are we a woman-owned business? Um, no special ownership status. You can choose one of these different things. And as you can probably tell from my voice, I'm not a woman-owned um, business. <laughs> so this would need not apply. Now, the, each one of these different things have different classifications. And again, look at your, your SBA listing um, at the SBA website. And we'll have a link to that as well about uh, how to be considered classified in these different areas. Some of these actually require some kind of certification and inspection to make sure that you are um, following one of these different classifications. But today we're going to go about no special ownership um, uh, status. So we're going to click on that real quick. Number of employees, owners, partners, and officers. So um, information about that again if you need it. Enter the estimated number of his employees. And it's just an estimated number. You don't have to be exactly there as long as you're not wildly off there. So let's go ahead and say if you're a small business getting started out and you're doing this by yourself as a sole proprietor, just go ahead and hit one. Annual sales revenue. Um, again, if you don't know what's going on, you know, if you're just getting started, earning, you can pretty much estimate it. Um, this is how much you estimated in the first year. Let's go ahead and put 10,000 in there. There we go. And parent organization is optional. Do you have a parent organization? If you do, you should know that. Um, and we're going to right here. Enter the information into the fields if there's a parent company. Um, a sub, and you might be a subsidiary of that company. Now, here's that information from that, too. Now, there's any notes about what's going on. Enter additional information in this field that may assist DMB in ensuring a DUNS number to your firm. Now, this is where you, this is pretty much a catch all for everything else about your particular situation as far as your number and stuff like that. And we go make sure this all this is filled out. Okay. Um, this is optional, so we leave that on there. Okay. 
and looks good looks good let's go ahead and go and submit your request and if you have any difficulties please contact this email right here so let's go ahead and do submit your request legal structure required oh I must have missed that okay let's go ahead and do legal structure let's go ahead and do proprietorship all right submit your request okay verification page here we go you just want to verify your data legal name of your company again if you don't you can go here enter the full legal name of the business not your full legal name but the legal name of your business okay the phone number of the business the physical address the organizational information the executive's name and the first and last name of the principal officer partner grant tier or owner okay and you affirm that you are a principal owner in the office of entitled which you are submitting the process information and your changes and you are properly authorized to submit these changes. You also agree not knowing to provide any false misleading information to the DMB. Knowing providing false and misleading information may result in criminal or civil pinnacle, uh, penalties per Title Section 8, Title 18, Section 1001 of the U.S. Criminal Code and may negatively impact status in DMB reporting maintaining on this company we're going to click that if you don't know what those things are have your lawyer take a look at that if you if you're unsure uh, make sure you do that or send them a question to, to verify that data this has a little thing where we can click and open that in the new tab so we can take a look at that section 18 criminal code and this is the code for you to get, take a look at that right there so today we're not going to go ahead and go through this this is as far as i can give you on a tutorial going through this uh, information but the next thing you would do is but yes and continue and it's going to tell you your next screen is going to pop up it's going to tell you that she's going to send you a email um, for verification that your business should be verified within uh, one business day and if you don't have any information coming up with that business and entity um, you want to go ahead and uh, get a hold of them and that, that information was in the beginning of the screen um, right around here you know so this has been the tutorial for how to set up a Duns and Braggs number. And um, when they um, get done processing your uh, claim uh, for your, your Duns and Braggs number, um, you, what you want to go ahead and do, they'll go ahead and send you an email, and that email will contain your Duns and Braggs number. And those emails will allow you to go to different places, which we'll show you in other websites, um, to be able to sign up and to make place a bid on a government contract.